Hello and welcome to One Cool Thing. Today we're talking about business laptops. If you work for a business, chances are you may need to use a laptop. No. Indeed, that is the case. And uh, today we have the Asus Expert Book. It is one of these business laptops and it makes many claims in terms of superlatives, like it's the lightest 14 inch business laptop. Mm -hmm. And maybe it is, maybe it isn't, uh, tell us about it. Yeah, so uh, if their claims are true, which I have no reason to doubt, and it certainly is one of the lighter ones we've ever measured, uh, 1.9 pounds for this laptop. And it's not made out of like a cheap plastic, it's a nice magnesium lithium alloy, which sounds very fancy. It feels nicer than, than plastic certainly, but it isn't as heavy as metal, so that's how they achieve that. Um, you got these thin borders on the screen to make sure that 14 inch size is intact, so uh, it's pretty impressive at, at first glance. Now, if you're looking for a ultra portable laptop, whether or not you tend you want to do business on it, hmm. uh, you may have noticed that Asus and other manufacturers have a wide range of different names for their for their ultra portable laptops. Yes. There's the ZenBook, there's the ZenBook Pro, mm -hmm. there's the VivoBook. What what makes the expert book different? Well, it's for experts. I mean, <laughs> for experts. I mean obviously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, this is this is sort of a um, an iteration of, of a one they had before, um, which did not share the name, but it's kind of the evolution of that. Um, so they've rebranded it as Expert Book, and that kind of incorporates a lot of things. It's an Intel Project Athena laptop, so it's kind of a holistic approach to being light, having good connectivity, being uh, a good performer, which we'll get to in a second. Um, and it is kind of made for the road warrior, the traveling business person, if you're if you're you know, taking a, a trip a lot for, for work or if you're bringing your laptop on your commute every day even, you don't want something that's gonna weigh you down, but you want something that actually can do work on it. Um, and so all the features kind of add up to, to that idea um, and it does it, it does it pretty well. Um, it's super light as I said, the keyboard's pretty comfortable to type on and you do have a big roomy touchpad which includes this button to pop up a touch calculator, which is kind of neat. We've seen that a couple times on other ASUS laptops and also I think some MSI laptops. Um, because small laptops like this, you obviously lose the room for a physical number pad. So it's nice for people who need that often to enter data um, to, to be able to pull that up. Yeah, see the two best things about this is not only is it a calculator, but you can also use it to enter numbers into an Excel spreadsheet. Um, but we should point out that it is not a full-fledged screen pad, which you can find on some of the ZenBook and ZenBook Pro models. That's actually an entire second screen, which makes it very easy to put your work on the main screen and maybe waste time by watching YouTube videos on the touchpad. This does not do that. Everyone needs to multitask, yeah. And uh, one more note on the keyboard and, and the, sort of the comfort of typing. So you'll notice this, this drop hinge situation. Um, it starts off flat. As you raise the screen up, it kind of lifts itself off the desk and you get this clearance both for ventilation and also for a more comfortable typing angle, which kind of replicates the desktop experience. So again, if you're someone who's working a lot on the go, or you have it on the airplane you know, tray table or whatever it is, um, that makes it a little more comfortable to type on. This is the uh, Core i7 model that we've reviewed here. Um, that's for $17.99 and you can get for $16.99 is the i5 version. So pretty similar, two options kind of a, in the same range um, for, the, for, the, for the price, but uh, different tiers of performance. Um, the 10th gen Intel processor, it's a U-series processor. It is, it is good, but not great. It's competent enough. It's not, a, it's not a productivity workhorse. If you're a media or content creator, this is, not, this is not really a laptop for you. If you're truly crunching through huge Excel data sets, again, probably something a little more potent would be better, um, a, fuller, a fuller mobile chip or, um, or even a mobile workstation, depending on your workload. Um, but for everyone who's doing a lot of, either if it's just word processing or you know, a lot of emails or, or more less strenuous uh, Excel stuff, um, this, this will get the job done. It's not a bad processor, it's still a Core i7. Um, 16 gigs of RAM in that unit and also uh, a kind of oh, <laughs> shocking amount of storage. Um, there are two there are two one, uh, one terabyte SSDs in this system. So which, that means there are two terabytes. There are two terabytes, yeah. I don't know why quite, I, I, I'm not quite sure why they actually put that much. That's a, that's a lot. Usually we complain about too little storage, so I'm not gonna complain necessarily, well, but it is a lot of storage for, for this type of system. Two terabytes of storage in many other laptops that we've seen, especially MacBooks, mm -hmm. would cost well in excess of $2,000, probably well in excess of $3,000. Getting that much storage in this type of laptop for seventeen ninety nine is a pretty good deal. It's a pretty good deal, yeah. If you really, if storage is the most important thing to you. Right, if, if you're someone who doesn't need that storage, then you're like, I probably could have saved a couple hundred dollars by having one terabyte, which unless you're doing a lot of media and, and right. gaming laptops need more than that. Um, 
you probably won't go over a terabyte that easily, but I'm never gonna complain too much about having too much storage. Right, and the second thing that I wanted to say about the two terabytes is that uh, the storage requirements of software keeps getting bigger. Yeah, um, it's true. not just games. Games mm -hmm. obviously get bigger. You have multi-gigabyte game files, yeah. but 64-bit uh, apps take up a lot of space. Um, developers now are creating apps without much regard to how much space they took up, mm. just you know, trying to optimize the performance. So really, two terabytes in the future, if you plan to keep this laptop for a long time, is not actually that much. Yeah, if this is your one laptop for everything, you want to buy one laptop and use it for work, travel, everything else, um, you won't hate that it has two terabytes of storage, I'll say that. Now, this is a 10th gen Intel processor. What about the graphics? So it's just gonna be the integrated graphics, um, not even the upgraded integrated graphics uh, that are included in some newer models. It's just the base level Intel UHD graphics, which not for 3D tasks, frankly, not for gaming. Um, it's, it's pretty mid to low end, mostly low end um, performance as far as the graphics is concerned. So if you, need to, if you need to do 3D tasks and if you have any interest in playing games, although again, this is a business laptop, so probably not. Now, since the Asus ExpertBook is a business laptop, that means you're gonna have to plug stuff into it, like mm -hmm. conference room AV systems, and you're gonna have to video conference with your colleagues. Yes. Can it do that? It's got you covered. So it has uh, this, again, part of the project that Thena sort of approach is a lot of connectivity, a lot of features, a lot of extras that make it kind of worthwhile. Um, as far as the webcam right here, it also has IR for Windows Hello login, which I do love Windows Hello. Um, it has a physical like privacy shutter here, so you can flip this switch and close yourself off from the world. No one can spy on you. Um, for ports on this end, we have HDMI and two USB-C Thunderbolt 3 ports, so A plus on that uh, for data transfer speeds. You need HDMI on a business laptop. Yes. There's, there's tons as of As much as we'd love to think that you don't. There's, yeah. there's lots of conference rooms out there now that have uh, Google Cast mm -hmm. capabilities but it does not work 100% of the time. And if you then find out that you're, you, you try to go reach for a wire and find out that your laptop is the one that doesn't have the HDMI port, it's, it's pretty annoying. So yes. I approve. Um, and another USB uh, 3.0 over here. So all told, a lot of good connectivity, especially for something so thin. Um, and it also, as far as related to Windows Hello Login, also has a fingerprint sensor for login. So, so you've got two ways to avoid typing in a PIN or a password. You can either use your yes. face or you can use your fingerprint. Um, and because this is um, a business laptop, you're going to want to probably deal with some sensitive data, and mm -hmm. so it's nice that it has those additional layers of security. Yeah, got TPM, got, got it, it's got it all. Um, another, another great thing, that's again, as far as Project Athena um, and making sure this is good for the road is the battery life of the system. Um, it maybe set a record on our battery tests. Um, it lasted for 20, nine hours, which is pretty insane. Um, they did claim up to 24 hours of battery life, so give or take usage and uh, you know what you're doing on it and brightness and volume and all those things. Um, on our standardized test, it lasted for more than 24 hours. So Yeah, which is not necessarily the results that you will get if you're using this no. uh, uh, throughout the course of a business day, mm -hmm. but 29 hours is is by far the, the longest that we've seen recently. Yeah. Um, this thing will not need to visit a power outlet for, for very long. Which is exactly what you want to hear if you're doing if you're doing work on this. Um, if you're crunching through stuff or using a ton of media and, and using internet a lot, it might drain faster. But in general, a very, 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 very long lasting laptop. Um, and it also has the instant sort of instant on and out of sleep um, Project Athena, again, sort of uh, philosophy about being ready to go as soon as you open it. So you don't have to worry about throwing this in your bag, it running out of battery, or not being ready quickly when you need it. It's, a, again, a holistic approach to being there when you need it. Now, what about the screen options? So it's just the one display, and it's pretty straightforward. Um, full HD, which is you know 1920 by 1080 resolution, and um, anti-glare coding, and that's kind of it as far as the screen features. It's nothing too fancy, there's no touch, Sorry to report for those who love the touch. Um, but yeah. It's pretty straightforward. That's gonna save you battery life. That's gonna make it clear and crisp to read text. Um, if you love a 4K screen for getting a lot of windows up, you're a little out of luck with this system, but. I gotta say, there is really no Goldilocks screen. I love the matte finish. I don't like glare. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, uh, a 1080p display is fine, but the yeah. text sometimes can appear grainy. Um, I, I, I'm kind of torn on that, you know, 4K versus mm -hmm. 1080p versus glossy versus matte. Um, they've decided clearly to go with one thing and one thing only, probably to keep costs down for yeah. the configurations. Yeah. Um, but it seems like that will serve most business users pretty well. 
Yeah, I would say so. Um, the the I, I do kind of like the glossy glass screen because it looks nice, and the brightness on this isn't isn't stellar. It's um, I mean, the maximum brightness it's it's pretty good, but it's not it's not doesn't blow me away. Um, so the screen is just there. It's good. It's good enough. It's not really no pros or cons necessarily. Now the expert book is a potentially good option if you need a business laptop, but don't forget that there are a lot of other ones. One of the uh, key competitors to the expert book is the Lenovo ThinkPad series. Mm -hmm. We particularly like the ThinkPad X1 Carbon, which is the same screen size, 14 inches. It also has the option for a matte display, but the ThinkPad X1 Carbon matte display has touch capabilities, which I personally love because um, there are just some things with Windows that are better with touch. Yep. Uh, not necessarily drawing or writing or using it as a tablet, but sometimes you just want to go back and you press the back button on the screen, it works great. Uh, the other uh, main competitor would be the Latitude line mm -hmm. from Dell. There's a lot of new Latitudes out there um, that compete. They might not be below one, one kilogram in right. weight, but uh, below you know two pounds. Uh, but they are definitely worth a look as well. Yes, plenty. it's a pretty crowded field. This does do enough to distinguish itself is what I would say. The lightness, the design, um, it's got a lot of good things going for it, even if necessarily we don't think it's the, the singularly best business laptop out there. So the Asus Expert Book is a extremely thin and light business laptop and it costs $1,800 in the configuration that we have here, which includes two terabytes, count them, two terabytes of storage as well as a 10th generation Intel processor. This combination could be a great choice if you're a business user who is frequently on the go.